hi everyone in this tutorial i will talk about the capital budgeting uh, i was preparing for cfa level 1 exam and i thought that i should share some of the concept i learned during the preparation so we are talking about capital budgeting so which is so for a company uh, there is always a need of capital so that company can undertake the new projects and uh, they can generate money or capital from three different sources one of the source is from the bank so when they take the money from the bank we call it debt and the good thing about debt is that when you file the income tax then there is no income tax on the debt or you can file for deduction on the income taxes in the amount of the interest you have paid so if we talk about how much does it cost so suppose if bank is charging us 10% interest rate and the corporate tax is uh, the 40% then uh, we will be actually uh, uh, saving 40% on the interest we have paid so therefore the, the total amount of uh, uh, cost for that will be 10% minus 1 minus 0.4 or only the 60 percent of it so so we can say that the the cost of the debt was only six percent because 40 percent is saved on the interest we paid in the tax in the form of taxes now the other source of capital so this was first source of capital the other source of capital is the preferred stock preferred uh, stocks yes so what is preferred stock so suppose if we if a company needs a large amount of money and uh, they want it to uh, so they can go to a, a wealthy person and then tell that person or a company that uh, if you buy our stock we will give you a 5% or a 10% or a particular amount of percentage of dividend every year and uh, the, the company may not be paying this dividend to everyone but especially to that uh, person or the company because they wanted to generate a large amount of cash and they don't have any other option so in that case how does we calculate the cost of the preferred stocks so suppose if uh, the company stock is uh, 50 dollars and they are paying so this is the price of the stock and then they are paying five dollars as a dividend so in that case we will say it's a ten percent so the cost of the capital through preferred stock was ten percent and the third way to generate money is through equity so we call it equity so what is equity equity is the investment by the owner so suppose if you are the owner of the company and you want to start a project you are not able to raise money from somewhere else or you have money to invest in the company so you can put your own capital and that will be considered as an equity or you can find another partner who is able to invest in your company and then you will also call that an equity or otherwise you can issue some new stocks in the market then if you issue new stocks they will also be kind of a partner or the owner of the company partial owner of the company and that money which is coming from the common stocks is also called as equity so how does we calculate the cost of the equity so the the way to calculate the cost of the equity is the expected return so suppose if you are the owner and you want to invest in the company you say that oh at least i want a five percent return on my investment otherwise i won't be investing so based on your expectation you call that the the rate of the equity suppose <clears throat> you want to calculate what is the total cost of capital we have so the total cost of capital will be equal to uh, so what we did this before is uh, we had 10 percent from debt and we multiply it by 1 minus uh, 0 
then we have a uh, 10% from preferred stocks and then we have 5% from equity right and now suppose we are generating 10 millions from debt and uh, um, 20 millions from uh, preferred stock and uh, 10 million from equity so in this case what we'll do is we multiply them by 10 multiply this by 20 and multiply this by 10 and then divide everything by uh, the sum which is 40 so that will be equal to uh, 6 into 10 plus 10 into 20 plus 5 into 10 divided by 40 so that will be my cost of capital so now let's go to the uh, the company uh, company's uh, uh, decision making for whether to take the project or not so now we know that how much is the cost of the capital to the company and now suppose the uh, company uh, look at the projects so they could be uh, different projects that company can take for example project one so project one says that let's invest one million dollar to uh, today so which has a negative cash flow of one million and then you will get for next 10 years a cash flow of 0.2 million so after one year you will get 2 million after two years you will get 2 millions and after same way after 10 years you will get 0.2 million so what can company do so so company can look at this project in two different ways one is that it can use its cost of capital so suppose cost of capital is uh, r or the or the answer from the top from this is uh, is uh, r then what we can do is we can calculate the value present value of all this future cash flow so we can do is we say minus 1 million and then plus 0 0.2 million divided by 1 plus r and then plus 0 0.2 million 1 plus r square and plus so on and then 0 0.2 million divided by 1 plus r is to power 10 and we can calculate what is the net present value so this will give us the net present value of the project the other way to so if if your net present value is positive then you will you should go for the project because you are making a money and if the net present value is less than zero then you should not take the project because it's not good for uh, the company because you will lose the money in that case the other way to look at the project is the uh, internal rate of return so in this case instead of using r uh, from the cost of capital we equate net present value equal to zero and then calculate r so we calculate what is the rate of the return so suppose so let's let's go back here and uh, we, we can we can we can calculate this so this was 60 uh, 60 plus uh, 200 260 310 so it, it is 310 divided by 40 which is approximately equal to 4728 and 4728 and 70 so it's approximately 7.7% uh, right and then we can come back here and sub calculate the r here so if r is greater than 7.7 percent .7 greater than 7 so the project is good and if r is less than 7.7 percent .7 then the project is bad we should not take the project so this is the another way to calculate the uh, the the 
or evaluate the project so sometimes if the company is comparing the two projects it can have a contradictory results uh, for net present value and the internal rate of return sometimes the net present value suppose uh, if you have a, a project which is like suppose now we calculate net uh, present value right so suppose it so so suppose you have a project one so project one will give you a cash flow of uh, 100 millions so you invest 100 millions and then you get uh, 20 million each for next year's right so so you invest 100 and then you get 20 each for next years and that, there's another project project 2 which gives you uh, which requires a cash flow of uh, uh, 1 million and then give you a return of uh, 0 0.2 million right so in this case the net present value will be higher for so net present value is for project one is greater than net present value net present value for project two so but irr should be same so should we take a uh, decision based on irr or net so so in this case we will take the uh, decision based on the net uh, present value however if instead of uh, point 0.2 if the return in this project would have been uh, 0 0.19 and 0 0.19 so in this case the ir or, or not 0 0.11 like let's take it 2.1 so like 2.1 and 2.1 so in that case the irr would have been like this so ir for project 2 would have been greater than project 1 so in this case we have a contradictory result because the net present value of project 1 is greater than project 2 but the irr is less than for project one is less than project two so where what should company do the company should take a decision uh, towards the uh, like for the better net present value so net present value is preferred when it comes to the choice of the project between two of them but they are giving the contradictory results based on irr and net present value now uh, let's look at the opportunity curve so now suppose this is the curve and this is the capital so now if the company wants to generate the capital so this is your cost of capital so as you know that if the company wants to generate just like small amount of money then it can just go to the bank and bank will give them the loan and that will not cost much to the company or they can issue some stocks but as they try to get more and more debt then the bank will be more cautious and then because of that they will increase the interest rate or they might have to go to some secondary sources which can have a higher cost uh, or the higher interest rates so first of all like suppose like i can give you an example like suppose if you have if you want to get a debt and you have bank one and bank two and bank three right so if you if you want to take loan from bank one it give you four percent interest and bank two give five percent and bank give six percent and uh, it can give you one million this can give you two million this can give you one million so when you want to generate your first one million you will go to bank one and you get your cost will be four percent but now if you so now if you want to generate uh, an additional million then you won't go to bank three but you go to bank two because bank f bank one is not giving you any more uh, loan right so let's write it million 
so uh, so you so your cost of capital will increase so for first million 1 million cost of capital is 4% when you get 2 million the cost of capital will be now 4.5% because you are paying 4% to this and 5% to bank to so this is how your uh, project or the cost of capital will increase so you so you can see that as you as you go on increasing the capital your cost of capital will, so so your curve will look something like this so your cost of capital will increase and same way if you look at the project so suppose you have project 1 project 2 project 3 and the project 1 will give you 20 percent uh, project 2 will give you 15 percent and project 3 will give you 10 percent so for sure you will first if you your first preference will be project one so you will apply your your add your money to project one so you will start so if, so your first uh, investment will be here and then as you try to invest more and more your choices for good projects will go down and you have uh, you will left with the projects which provide you lower returns so slowly your your uh, your schedule for investment so this is your schedule schedule for investment and this is your cost of capital so your schedule for investment will go down and your cost of capital will go up so at what point you should stop investing so you should stop investing at this point where your cost of capital starts to be more than your return on the projects so you should at the company should be always be try to reach this point where they can or generate the additional capital for the projects uh, which will be providing more return than the cost of the capital and uh, and the money uh, which is uh, required to or the total money which is um, used at this point is called the capital uh, target or the capital which a company generates for for it to go for the so same way uh, so you can see that if the if the um, interest rates uh, are decreased or the money supply has been increased in a country then obviously your cost of capital curve will go down and you will be able to take more projects and that will somehow simulate the economy so this is uh, was few of the things which I learned in the CFA and uh, we can we can talk about more in the next videos so thank you